Oh, hello. Fancy seeing you here. Hello. It's Hi, me, yeah. Hugo from the quiz. Wow. So, Hugo, we... Don't do this. Don't do this um, again. And me, Jack from the quiz. Oh, sorry. And me, and me, Jack from the quiz. <laughs> Back again for another quiz. Here we are. Hugo, I have a question for you. Mm. We fixed your, um, your problem, haven't we? Oh yeah, I had a bit of an internet problem, but thank you, to, thanks to Jack, it's solved now for the most part. Well, to be fair, it was friend of the show Grace Cook as well. We uh... and grand friend of the show Grace Cook. Uh, Jack, don't forget to post it on Facebook and stuff. Yeah, because no one can, uh, can, no one at the moment can see this top notch chat. Top notch content. Yeah, we don't want to waste it. Uh... There's oh. an internet super song friend of the show. If you're here, looks a bit like a raw shank test today. Raw shark. It does. Test, it looks. It looks quite unnerving. What do you it? see? Um, I'll tell you what I see, Hugo. No, I'm not actually. I don't want to give it away. I see Nizna Shibs in front of the show. But who is it? <laughs> um, sorry, my laptop's been quite slow at the moment. I've got some other things running in the background. Well, that's okay. He's got to run all his special programs. Otherwise, geography literally stops. <laughs> yeah, that's true. My, my laptop solely keeps the earth turning. Mm. Um, geography wouldn't happen without yeah. well, programs Jack's running now join us at colon this place oh brilliant yeah that's perfect actually that should do the job um, we'll, yep. we'll get started in a few minutes if you're joining us as a laser day you probably already know this by now but do skip forward until the actual quiz starts because this might <sighs> not be going to be for you I think I had a panic that I did what I did last week and uh, posted on the Who see page as my personal account, which was... Uh... It's okay, you don't need to worry about that until the end, I guess. Oh, no, no I thought I did that. I shared the live link. Uh... <laughs> the the, um, the thumbnail is, is great for, for this one. Oh, yeah. That? Just us having a great time. <laughs> it's just us having a great time, exactly. And um, hopefully you will be able to have a great time as well. When we get started with the actual quiz. We've got a lot of stuff for you today. I'd say it's, um, I hope you like your um, screens, I'll say today. We have got some absolutely excellent rounds. Let's just say um, you, it, it's going to be a whales of a time. Oh, it's good, it's good. Let's just say that this is, is suitable for television. Let's just say you may marvel at what you see here today. Oh, it's so good. Let's just yeah. say there's a wipeout round as well. <laughs> you wouldn't want to wipe out at the end. Jack, Wait, you that's... posted the links. <laughs> I've posted one of the links. The other one is eluding me currently, but it's on the way. On the way. Oh, there we go. Big things, Hugo. Big things happening over here. Um, oh, I think I shared it to that place. I might you share another group. What did I share that to? Uh, have, oh, have a think about who's this person whose face has been lightly distorted. It's an international superstar in front of the show. Can you tell us, pray tell, who it is? Uh, Hugh, can you really just go and check on the Freshers 2020 page? Have I shared it to that? I'm not on it, I'm afraid. I can't. Could you check on it somewhere? Could you check on it? Okay, I'll, I'll check it. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not. I'm not in Freshers 2020, so I can't. Oh, Freshers 2020 is a great place. Well, I'm not. I wasn't a fresher or a fresher in 2020. No, but you know, you. Can I mean, I was in. briefly an international rep, um, but that was just for one viewing of. Um, oh, I didn't share. Where did I share it to them? Oh no. It's actually just um, slightly. It's okay. We'll get. We'll get through it. Um, um, if you're wondering, this is actually my friend of the show. Let's get started and show you who it is. It's this person. Who? It's the one who shows Alex Jones. Hang on. I'm sure. Very well done if you got that. Uh, see, I've, I, I've made her face double. Um, what a lovely... Look at that. Wow. Who'd have thought? Uh, how are you doing, Jack? Good. I'm just trying to kind of share it to... Uh, oh, there we go. I think it's fine. Post. Excellent. All right. Right, so we're going to get started. Get yourself a paper, pen and paper ready and start thinking about what you might you want your team name to be at the end. Um, but here, and start thinking about maybe what you want your score to be at the end as well. Um, hopefully, uh, this was Alex Jones, of course, as I just said. And on we go with the links round. The links round. Here's a round where we will give you nine seemingly general knowledge questions. But there's a catch. 
those answers to the first nine questions all have something in common. And question number 10 will be, what's the link? What is the link that links together the first nine answers? Mm. So here we go. Mm. Question number one. Which artist controversially smashed a guitar on a recent episode of Saturday Night Live? Which artist controversially smashed a guitar on a recent episode of Saturday Night Live? Look how topical this is. Blimey. Whew, that's very topical. Sorry, Hugo, about my, my, my radio silence there. I was... Uh, I, th- I thought I'd accidentally shared the quiz and overheard a Durham Uni. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm never very welcome too. Yeah, that's true. But no, I had another, luckily for everyone involved. So um, which artist controversially smashed a guitar on a recent episode of Saturday Night Live? Argu- it's controversial that it's controversial. Because very few pointed out that it's like it's not that much of a big deal. They just smashed a guitar or tried to smash a guitar, whatever. But till yeah. some people saw it as dodged. I mean, I I don't approve of really of the uh, guitar smashing practice. I uh, you're a bit of a guitar lovey. I a little bit, yeah. That's okay. Anyway, question number two. So the answer to this one and the answer to the next one and the answer to the next seven questions after that <laughs> will all have something in common. Remember, question number one. Which area of the Scottish Highlands is mentioned in the song Letter from America and is a homophone of the setting of much of Game of Thrones? Which area of the Scottish Highlands is mentioned in the song Letter from America and is a homophobe, uh, not homophobe, no, a homophone, <laughs> uh, sorry, a homophone of the setting of much of Game of Thrones? Um, great song. This, I, when I wrote this question, I felt like it would be up your street. <laughs> it really is. Uh, are you a fan of the song, Hugo? Um, yeah, I am, actually. That's how I know. Yeah, I, I thought it would be up your street. Do you, are you a fan of the song, Jack? Uh, yeah. Fairly, yeah, I yeah. thought it would be up your street, actually. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Uh, question number three. Um, question number three. Which 1999 film adapted from a Stephen King novel stars Tom Hanks and Michael Clark Duncan? Which 1999 film... I think I said too many nines in that. Which 1999 nine film adapted from a Stephen King novel stars Tom Hanks and Michael Clark Duncan? Mm. One for you, uh, Stephen King lovers out there, of which there I think there are many. Um, are you a Stephen King lover? Um, I do in theory. I don't have. I've never actually consumed that much of his media. Is the live chat banned? Thinking. Sorry. Or is that just happening on my YouTube? Are you banned from? Like, have you been banned from talking? Chat. Sorry? Have you been banned from talking? I don't know if I've been, or if it's just Oh, not... yeah, no, it's not. It's not allowed. Hang on That's a okay. second. Um... You can keep this going. I'm going to try to investigate. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go on with question before while Jack sees if he can solve that. I'm not sure if... You... It, it's fine if not. That's okay. If you... You can send one of us a Facebook message if you're friends with us on Facebook, if you have something pressing to say. Um, question number four. Which Israeli-British illusionist is best known for his spoon-bending illusions? Which Israeli British illusionist is best known for his spoon bending illusions? Um, you'll be pleased to know that Hillbead YouTube channel has now flown past 100 subscribers uh, and we're at 105 subscribers. 105! So. Next yeah. up, the bronze play button. I know. I'm very excited. All right, let's see if I accidentally banned the chat. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> Uh, this is one of those questions where we, we start off with which Israeli British illusionist, and um, there probably aren't many famous ones that, enough to ask a question. So, if you know an Israeli British illusionist, that's probably the answer. I can talk in the chat. On oh, yeah, you're the admin, aren't you? You should be able to do it now. Oh, by me saying hello, I think I broke the taboo. Oh, brilliant! Try and say hello. Try and say hello back. See if you can. It works. Hooray. <laughs> that's really weird. Well, there we yeah. go. Question number five. The live chat now works. You, so everyone who's been holding back because they haven't been able to, please now send all the messages you like. Question number five. Which web search engine launched in June 2009? It's a bit of a bare bones question, this one. Which web search engine launched in June 2009? Oh, interesting. Sometimes the bare bones questions are the ones that you need. Oh, I have a bit of small talk for you, Jack. Yeah, brilliant. Please. Uh, have you got much snow? <laughs> you know for full well that we have had a lot of snow since sunday we are i would say drowning in snow although it has melted quite a lot uh the snowman that i made on i made a snowman on tuesday cool. no, I didn't, monday um i didn't call it anything my parents called it jaunty yeah so you take that as you will. yeah uh, i'll take that as i will brilliant and uh, but he's he's currently he's been going further and further backwards as the days have gone on oh that's and now he looks to be almost completely skyward 
He's he's looking up. His eyes are. Uh, I mean, are in your final moments, heaven. is that not what you want to be? Where you want to be looking? No. Anyway, question number six: The Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir can be found in which New York location? Thought to be the most filmed location in the world. Uh, the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir can be found at which New York location? Thought to be the most filmed location in the world. Great bit of trivia there, Hugo. Thanks. I sort of had two ways of asking the question, and I just put them both in the same the same question. <laughs> hey, I love doing that kind of thing. You know what I say? Why have one word where you can have ten for the same word? Absolutely. So yeah, how much snow is falling? Because I did see that Cornwall was getting some snow at some point. What a sprinkling! We've had a little sprinkling, but not enough to settle. Just a little. A little bit of a dandruff, you know? I mean, even even that is quite unusual in Cornwall, from what I've heard, in the, in the, on the Great Plains. Yeah, we're not, we're not very snowy. Unlike Tintin's dog. Sorry, that's a spoiler for later <laughs> in the quiz. Yeah, spoiler. Um, question number seven. Which US-led research and development project saw the development of the first nuclear bombs? Which US-led research and development project saw the development of the, world, of the first nuclear bombs? Hmm. Thank you for Annabelle for saying hello in the chat. I'm trying to think about the link here, and it's currently eluding me. But that's only that's all be, all because I can't actually remember any of the questions. No, that'll, than, that'll do it. Other than this one and the uh, the Less Summer America one. Um, nope. I'll have to just get at some other point. Right. So next question, question number eight. What does ER stand for? in the embossed letters on British post boxes. What does ER stand for in the embossed letters on British post boxes? I don't think they're embossed. I don't really do the, Yeah, it's embossed rather than engraved, isn't it? Oh, Will Terrell says also, also says hello. Oh, Great brilliant. It's all, it's all go, honestly. Oh, it's all going. Some, some of our, our best quiz writers involved in the chat. In fact, no one who's actually said anything in the chat today hasn't written a quiz for the Hill for the Vern Bar quiz, a round table Vern Bar quiz. People have written rounds for the quiz. People all over the place over the years we've have had written rounds for the quiz. Gabby Logan probably did at her time in Yeah, probably. back probably. in 2017. Uh, for legal reasons, we can't confirm or deny that. Anyway, question number <laughs> nine. What term refers to the 14 bones that make up the fingers of each of your hands? Uh, what term refers to the 14 bones that make up the fingers of each of your hands? As in, each of your hands has 14 of these bones in it. 14 in one of them, and 14 in the other one. I believe also, maybe, 14 in your tootsies, in your toes, if you will. I wouldn't like to, I don't know, jump on that bad like record. Your, your particular fingers. I feel like if I, you know, I don't want Peru to happen again, so... Uh... I can't support I didn't want you to happen again, but then I just wrote it as a question again. <laughs> you did. You did write the mistakes. I, I almost considered doing one about Byzantium. Wow. Um, now, low question, low. And question number ten: If you if you hadn't conned on already, what's the link? What's the link between the first nine answers? Mm. That's a good question. What's the link? So there's something that links them all together, but what could it be? I'm going to nip through those again in case maybe you've got the link since and you want to re- a little refresher. So question number one, and it, we can see if Jack will get it as well. Which artist <laughs> controversially smashed a guitar on a recent episode of Saturday Night Live? Question number two, which area of the Scottish Highlands is mentioned in Letter, Letter from America and is a homophone of the setting of much of Game of Thrones? Uh, which 1999 film, question number three, adapted from a Stephen King novel, stars Tom Hanks and Michael Clark Duncan? Question four, which Israeli-British illusionist is best known for his spoon-bending illusions? Question number five, which web search engine launched in June 2009? Question number six, the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir can be found in which New York location, thought to be the most filmed location in the world, by a one line in the Wikipedia article of this place? Um, <laughs> Question number seven, which US-led research and development project for the development of the first nuclear bombs? Question number eight, what does ER stand for on British post boxes and among other places as well? Uh, question number nine, what term refers to the 14 bones that make up the fingers of each of your hand? And of course, as always, question number 10, what's the link? What's that link? Uh, I think, 
I think I've potentially I have an idea. I have a, a guess anyway. I have a guess. Do you want to, do you want to whisper in my ear? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. well, that doesn't really, that doesn't really work actually. Um, brilliant. We got that out of the way. Here comes the next round. This is uh, a classic Annabelle round. This is Welsh pick and mix, because <laughs> as we all know, yeah, that course. Cheshire is next to Wales. And some of the Cheshire is in Wales. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> Welsh pick and mix. So here's just ten questions about Wales. Don't don't Great. overthink it. Don't overthink it. So Jack, off we go. Okay, let's go. So question number one: Which river forms the northernmost section of the border between Wales and England? Which river forms the northernmost section of the border between Wales and England? Here's a little bit of trivia for you, Jack. Yeah. Um, Annabelle, our regular uh, quiz writer, who we appreciate very much, her brother is a prolific Wikipedia editor. And as it turns out, the graph about take that we used in last week's wipeout was made by Annabelle's brother. And I just put it in the wipeout completely coincidentally. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, isn't it? What thought? a small world. It's just a small world to you. It's a small world. It's a small world. It's a tiny, weeny little world. So thank you to Annabelle, and thank you to Johnny, Annabelle's brother, for that fact. Question number two. Number two. Which of these is not the name of a Welsh town? Don't read them out. <laughs> a. Pant don't read, don't read them out. Don't read them out. Generally, don't read them out. That might be too much oh. of a clue. What? But isn't that just... Can't everyone just... Okay. All right, everyone can out. read them out, but you know... Just don't, just it's because my that. my pronunciation is just so impeccable that just, yeah exactly I give it away yeah that's fair <laughs> so which of these is not the name of a Welsh town or place in Wales <clears throat> uh, I hope I didn't give anything too uh, too much away by me shouting at you so it's fine okay I can reveal for an extra bit of uh, trivia that. Um, I think, yeah. Is that true? Not, no, it's not true anymore. But my sister used to live in one of these places. Possibly still does. Mm, I'm not. I haven't been there. No, this is a bit embarrassing. <laughs> it's fine. Question number three. <clears throat> Question number three. Who is the current first minister of Wales? Who is the current first minister of Wales? There you go. Give that some thought. Current first, ahead of um, some couple of people in joint second. No, no, it doesn't, I was trying. That no, doesn't really work out, Joe. Come back to me. Get back to me. Okay. What do you think of this Welsh view vista? It's very nice. Mm. Where is it? Wales. Oh yeah, yeah, makes sense. Question number four. Question number four: Which mythical king was popularized by Geoffrey of Monmouth in the 12th century and is traditionally linked to Wales? Which mythical king was popularized by Geoffrey of Monmouth in the 12th century and is traditionally linked to Wales? Mm. Who could it be? Could Which it mythical be? king? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. In many well, wa- Wales, in many Wales, in many ways, Jack, I feel uh, that. Um, Wales to me is Scotland to you. Potentially a place you've been many times. Uh, we need full readings, please. Uh, Annabelle, who wrote the round, thinks you should read out the question number two. Uh, well, we'll go through that at the end, shall we? Okay. Yep. No, I'm happy to. Happy to right, oblige. Question number five. Question number five a Welsh. Fo- Sorry, no. Okay. A Welsh folk custom involves carrying an animal's skull into someone's home and drinking their alcohol. The skull of which animal is used? A horse, B cow, or C sheep? A Welsh folk custom involves carrying an animal's skull in someone's home and drinking their alcohol. The skull of which animal is used? A horse, B cow, C sheep. Hmm. That's the that sounds like a bit of an inconvenient custom. Yeah, but like you wouldn't be, be great friends with your your neighbours if you were doing that with any of these skulls. So, for, to be honest, for me, I think which animal skull it is, like, wouldn't make much difference in my opinion of it. <laughs> I mean, oh, wait, a sorry, skull is a skull. I, I see you're about to bring an animal skull into my house and drink all my alcohol. Can I just check? Um, I hope that was not a horse skull. <laughs> Obviously, in times of COVID, it's always important to check that your skulls have been sanitised as well. Absolutely. Yeah, please. That's um, a little PSA for you there. Question number six. 
Question number six. Which Welsh-based anim animated children's series started in 1987 and remains popular now? The original series featured one actor performing all of the characters' voices. Gosh. Which Welsh-based animated children's series started in 1987 and remains popular now? The original so, series featured one actor performing all of the characters' voices. Not many people know this, but actually Jack performs all the voices of the characters you hear in the Vern Barkwood. Yep. Uh, I, did, I trained in ventriloquism in my younger days and you know it's useful to have it's very impressive that he's actually um throwing his voice about 400 miles um yeah to to, to my room you know what? you know what stranger things have happened hugo that's so true anyway question number seven question number seven which of the two welsh emblems have been a tradition for longer uh the daffodil or the leek mm. which of the two welsh emblems have been a tradition for longer the daffodil or the leek? That's a difficult question. Daffodil or leek? What would you rather have in your bouquet, Jack? Uh, a daffodil, probably. And Jack, what would you rather have in a soup? A leek, I'd say. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Remember that for later. <laughs> when I get Jack a bouquet and a little... Vars of soup. Well, I don't know. Question number eight. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's go for it. Question number eight. Which comedian's work includes Nevermind the Buzzcocks and Blank's work experience? He has one tattoo of a potato and one of a Battenberg cake on fire. Which comedian's work includes Nevermind the Buzzcocks and Blank's work experience? He has one tattoo of a potato and one of a Battenberg cake on fire. And they may possibly have a link to the category of today's round. What? Surely not. Surely not. Hugo, I don't know if you've been watching the Australian Open has been on uh, this week. Uh, I haven't been able to, I'm afraid. I've been watching other things, I guess. Paint dry? Uh, I was going to, but it was a bit too lively for me. So I, <laughs> so I, I went back to the um, just the BBC, BBC iPlayer um, showings of um, the International Bowling Championship. That was great. I watched that. Question number nine. Question number nine. Which Tom Jones song does the character Carlton famously dance to in the show The French Fre The, the Fresh Prince, Prince of Bel Air? Like Which Tom Jones show song does the character Carlton famously dance to in the show The Fresh Prince of Bel Air? In the city of Paris, born and raised, <laughs> on the playground where I spend most of my days. Oh. Um. um I don't know what city is in, in French. It might be city. Sorry, tell me more about the Australian Open. Who's winning? Oh, the, the British woman. Who? Which one? She went out, didn't she? There were there were three British women in the uh, draw this year. Blimey. They all they're all currently out of the tournament though. So uh... what can you do? I know. Question number ten. The final of this round. Final question. <laughs> you don't have to read <laughs> this one out. That's fine. Um, how many syllables are in the name? Yeah, actually, it's best if I don't read out because obviously mm. I get it right and people can just count what I was saying. I'll go give it a go, I guess. La, uh, Lanfair Pil. No, I'm not going to, to embarrass myself. Why don't you give it a go, Hugo? I just noticed there's a bit where there's four L's in a row. Is that. Yeah, I don't understand how that one works. <laughs> Oh, she was because uh, of Lan the end of the Gwen Gil Gokkerin Gokwir Drob Wir Lantisillian Gogongoch. I know everyone knows this last bit. Gogongoch. Yeah, it's classic. We're going to nip through those again so Jack can redeem himself and for refusing to read out some of them. <laughs> okay. Um, which river forms the northernmost border of that those two countries? Uh, which there's not a name of a Welsh town. Uh, Pantywaco, Towden Hole, Splot, or Bully Hole Bottom. Brilliant. Uh, who's the current first minister of Wales? Which mythical king is traditionally linked to Wales? Uh, which skull is used to carry alcohol in someone's home? Uh, which uh, series featured one actor performing all the characters' voices? Uh, what's longer, the daffodil or the leek? Uh, I don't think that's the question. 
<laughs> what has been a tradition for longer than Daffodil of the Leak? <laughs> well, I like what's longer than Daffodil of the Leak. <laughs> it's going very well, I just thought. Yeah. Uh, which comedian's work uh, includes those things? Cool. Uh, what Tom Jones song does Carlton sing in Fresh Prince of Bella? How many syllables are in that long word? I'm not going to pronounce it. There we go. Classic. That's another round done. On to round number three. Thank you to Charlotte for this next one. It's our What's on TV word snake. <laughs> uh, it's a classic word snake. So the any given answer, the last letter will be the first letter of the next answer. And also of any given answer, the first letter will be the last letter of the previous answer. And it loops around like a snake does if it's eating its tail. Um, so question number one, all about what's on TV, television. Question number one, from Hotel, Ven- from Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation fame, what is the name of the This Morning presenter that's from Birmingham? Um, quite, uh, from Hotel Transylvania 3, what fame, what is the first name of the This Morning presenter who is from Birmingham? I'm sure this question is probably quite close to Charlotte's heart. Definitely. She really loves Hotel Transylvania 3. Exactly. Um, just a reminder that the last letter of this question here will be the first letter of the next one. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Honestly, how these things work. And we at the Van Barquiz absolutely love having a television background where you can make the question look like it's on the telly. <laughs> here we go. Question number two. Re- remember, it's a word snake. So the last letter of this one will be the first letter of the next one. Alongside co-presenter Rachel Riley and lexicographer Lucy, no, Susie Dent, who currently presents Countdown? Alongside co-presenter Rachel Riley and lexicographer Susie Dent, who currently presents Countdown? Regular Countdown. <laughs> Will Jack will get copyright struck? No, <laughs> I don't think, I think we're quite safe uh, from my whistle there. Uh... It was pretty, uh, it's pretty accurate. Do, 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 do. I think at my possibly at my 18th birthday party there was a bit where we all just sang the, the countdown um, theme around the dinner table. It Are was quite playing? a lively affair, as you can imagine. Were you, were you playing Street Countdown? We were having a murder mystery dinner party yet, party actually. Oh, very right, very right, right, good time. Oh, see that came up. Question number three. Uh, in the infamous episode of Come Dine with Me. Peter Walsh describes Jane as having all the grace of what? <laughs> In the infamous episode of Come Down With Me, Peter Walsh describes Jane as having all the grace of what? And we're after quite a few words of this. It's not, we're not just a few, we're not, it's not just three or four words. We want like a whole, I don't know how many, it's like seven or eight maybe words. This is really, this is an infamous episode. It's fair to say. Um, so, in, you might learn when to stop in the quote from the next one because you'll learn what the what the last letter should be. Does that make sense? Question oh. number four. Escape to the Country presenter Sonali Shah has previously been presenter of which BBC children's news show? Escape to the Country presenter Sonali Shah has pre- previously been the presenter of which BBC children's news show? A classic time. Must be I'm not sure how many BBC Children's News show that, so shows there are, <laughs> but hopefully you'll be able to get this one. And that might help you now know the last letter of the previous, what we want for the previous answer. <laughs> What's Give that, Oh, uh, It was a countdown theme again. It's now stuck oh. in my head. I like the bit that goes, just goes... <laughs> that bit. Oh, the clock, a clock. It doesn't really go like it's like, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Question number five. Under, oh, sorry. Which Homes Under the Hammer presenter has the catchphrase stairs leading up to the bedrooms? Which Homes Under the Hammer presenter has the catchphrase mm-hmm. stairs leading up to the bedrooms? <laughs> so that's really classic memes coming out on this round. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think I've watched Homes Under the Hammer that many times. Oh, well, you've um, surely seen the compilation of this person saying this so many times a day. I'll show I you. I don't think I Okay. I look forward to it, Hugo. Question numero six. 
Who presented the show that inspired <laughs> Are You Smarter Than a Silver Sec? Are You Smarter Than a Ten Year Old? Oh, who amazing. inspired who um presented the show that inspired Are You Smarter Than a Social Sec? Are You Smarter Than a Ten Year Old? Hang on. Uh, I don't I Charlotte seems to be implying that I didn't come up I didn't I just didn't come up with Are You Smarter Than a Social Sec the name myself. I think she misread the question and actually it's the other way around. Oh uh, true. <laughs> Who presented the show that was inspired by Are You Smarter Than the Social Sec? <laughs> Are You Smarter Than the Ten Year Old? There we go. There we go. Question number seven. Question number seven. Oh, me. Alexander Armstrong, <laughs> pointless presenter, voiced Mr. Uh... Blank. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Who from the Sarah Jane Smith Adventures. From Sarah Jane Adventures. Alexander Armstrong, pointless presenter, voiced Mr. Who from the Sarah Jane Adventures. What a show. Oh, what a dear. show. That is a throwback. All the television coming out now it is not necessarily what's on TV as in what's currently on TV, <laughs> but it's what has been on TV in the past. And remember, it's a word snake. It's a fantastic show, this one. I was a big fan of it back in the day. I'm sure you were too, Hugo. Oh, absolutely. Although it was some very scary episodes. I feel like Bradley Walsh was a clown in one of them. Uh, I think there definitely is a clown. I don't know who, was, who he played it, but yeah. Watching, though. Question number eight. Tenable presenter Warwick Davis played Phyllis <laughs> Flitwick in which film series? Tenable presenter Warwick Davis played Phyllis Flitwick in which film series? What are your opinions on Tenable, Hugo? I've not actually seen it, I don't think. What? I cannot believe you've never seen Tenable. Have you seen Lightning? No. It's the new think- one. Who's it with? Zoe Lyons. I don't know who that is. Um, question number <laughs> nine. Which Capital FM presenter stars alongside his dad from Spandau Ballet in their show <laughs> Sunday Best? Which Capital FM, FM presenter stars alongside his dad from Spandau Ballet in their show Sunday Best? Do, 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 do. Harvey, um, Harvey says that Tenable is godly. I need to watch that, Harvey. Lovely to have you with us. See, Harvey knows where it's at. He knows Tenable's the place to be. I, I like the fact that um, his dad from Spider Man Ballet, like when he's thinking, now, Dad, I'm sure I've seen you in something. Uh, yeah, it was Spider Man Ballet. Um, <laughs> question number 10. A, remind, a reminder that the last letter of each question is the first letter of the next one. And question 10, the last letter of question 10 will be the first letter of question of the answer to question one. Mm-hmm. Question number 10. Which comedian and former doctor is known as the Cineman on The Chase? Which comedian and former doctor is known as the Cineman on The Chase? Not going to lie, absolute blinder of around this one. Thank you very much, Charlotte. It really is. It's nostalgia to the max. Actually, it's not even nostalgia because mm. this, this guy is very much uh, centre stage in current TV. Absolutely. He's in everything. I, he, he is. I think he presents other things as well. He's got a new programme. He does. It right, does. let's go through these again. Right, so we're after the This Morning presenter from Birmingham. Um, the person who presents Countdown alongside Rachel Riley and Susie Dent. Question number three. Uh, we want the quote uh, that, that describes the grace of Jane. Um, it's several. We want a lot, a lot of words for that one. This one, um, Sinan Shah also presented which BBC uh, children's news show? Question number five: um, Who has the present? Who has the catchphrase "stairs leading up to the bedrooms"? Question six: Who presented the show that inspired "Are You Smarter Than Social Sack"? "Are You Smarter Than a Ten Year Old"? Question seven: um, Who Alexander Armstrong voiced Mister Who from the Sarah Jane Adventures? Sarah Jane Adventures. Sorry, we've got a bit of time in there. Question number eight: Tenable presenter Warwick Davis played Phil- Phileas Flitwick in which film series? Question number nine. Which Capital FM presenter stars alongside his dad from Spandau Ballet in the Sun in their show Sunday Best? And finally, question number ten. Which comedian and former doctor is known as the Cineman on the Chase? Boom. There we go. Whoa. What up next? If you thought you had not not enough screen time yet, then this is the round for you. Oh, blimey! Oh. Yeah, do you know that? Because of the lag, but I didn't know you had a moving background on it, Jack. Yeah, this round was uh, this round was uh, written by me. Uh, and who's and it like, chosen by? I mean, why have we why are we, are we having it? 
Um, it was chosen because it was the round chosen by the person with the, the team with the best name last week. Uh, chosen by us, as in the team name was chosen by us. The best one, as in the one that won. Brilliant, uh, brilliantly put. But we didn't choose. Oh, it, oh, it's very hard to say. But anyway, they chose Marvel Cinematic Universe as their topic. Uh, and so we made that happen. We have written a Marvel Cinematic Universe round and we're about to show it to you right now. So uh, let's there we going. go. Here we go. Question number one. It's not, it's not all, uh, it's unfortunately animated. Uh, which film kicked off the MCU in 2008? Nice and uh, straightforward there. The questions aren't all that straightforward. Um, I got a bit carried away with some of them. But for this one, which film kicked off the MCU in 2008? Um, I've tried to have a nice picture in the uh, in the middle. But, I like uh, it. Try it goes for a different approach because you you never want your slide to be too busy. I saw, I, I want I watched a little bit of the program Interior Design Masters, and I learned that you know if you won't have lots going on in the room, you don't want yeah. a really busy wallpaper. Exactly. So don't have a really busy background if you want to have really engaging pictures in the middle. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I always I like to include pictures, you know, but I feel like when you stretch them to be the background, it often means they're a little bit grainy. So this right. is like the best of both ways. Absolutely. It's brilliant. This is quite high, high def. Um, I, I say high def these days. Um, question number two. That one's not quite a high definition. Uh, question number two. Name one of the two actors that have starred in the most Marvel movies. Name one of the two actors that have starred in the most Marvel movies. I'm not going to read out Harvey's most recent comment. And if you don't want spoilers for um, the latest Star Wars films, then I recommend not looking at it. I can't believe how the badges disable the chat. They can be right, so again, honestly. Raining it's down. Just so... oh, I can't believe it. Um, so there you go. So let's think about this. It's quite a difficult one, this one. You've got to kind of think through all the movies that you've seen. Have they got them in there? Have they not? Uh, and maybe come to a conclusion. Mm, absolutely. Uh, and uh, therefore, after that one, we of course have the next question, which is often known as question number three. Question number three, which phase three MCU movie grossed the least worldwide? So that is phase three. So not phase one or two or four, which we're just starting to see now. I want phase three. That requires so which, a lot of knowledge here. Uh, which phase, I can make it a little bit easier to be fair. It's all of the movies uh, between Age of Ultron uh, and the latest Avengers movie. So all the movies in that, which one grows the least? I don't, I've not seen Age of Ultron. Yeah, a lot of people haven't. I also didn't see the one that I should have done before seeing the last one. But it's okay, question number four. Question number four, at the turn of the 20th century, how many Infinity Stones in the MCU could be found on Earth? At the turn of the 20th century, how many Infinity Stones in the MCU could be found on Earth? Um, I've got a little question about this one, Jack. Yep. Yeah. When you say at the turn of the 20th century. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's 1900. I'm talking about the year 1900. You're talking about the year 1900. Brilliant. That's what, uh, that's what I thought. That's what I was hoping for. Um, yeah. It's, uh, I just, there's nothing, there's no, it, there's no significance at all to the year 1900. Uh, I just wanted to choose a random year and I started to go 1900. Well, there is significance uh, to it in that it's before various other events. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, there, there's significance in that respect, but there's, uh, there's no intrinsic significance. Yeah, we could have put in the year 1843. Exactly. That's a very important year. But we didn't, unfortunately. Question number five. Question number five. Who is the main antagonist in the 2017 film Spider-Man Homecoming? Who is the main antagonist in the 2017 film Spider-Man Homecoming? I will say to my dad, uh, we did watch this the other day. Uh, not very long ago. So... <laughs> mm. um, also... That just so if anyone's like, oh, he got that. I know that's not a picture from Spider Man Homecoming. Um, uh, Jack, I don't think that's a picture from Spider Man Homecoming. <laughs> I know. Oh, dear. It's a, it's a London skyline there. I don't think that gives anything away. I mean, it's got nothing to do with the actual question, so it won't give anything away. Well, let's hope it doesn't come up in the wipeout. What pictures are in, what's in the background of this? That was a very good point. Question number six. Question number six. How many films has Bruce Banner, aka Hulk, featured in? How many films is Bruce Banner, a.k.a. Hulk, featured in? And we're not uh, including post-credit scenes. Yeah, that's quite key, because I feel like that's a bit, like, it's, I, I feel like I'm asking too much people if I, if I want to have post And we're scene. meaning him played by Mark Ruffalo as well. No. In, ever? Ever. In the MC, in the Marvel Universe. In the Marvel, in the Marvel Universe, Universe, or the, oh gosh. 
So in the Marvel right. Cinematic in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so the like the universe that is that everything is tied in together in, in this this most recent iteration of that. Uh, how many films has Bruce Banner appeared in? Well, that, I'll let that be the sword that Jack falls on. Question number seven. It's not. Uh, who plays assassin and adopted daughter of Thanos Gamora in four MCU films? Who plays assassin and adopted daughter of Thanos Gamora in four MCU films? And then a picture of uh, Thanos himself looking a little bit, you know, a little bit pensive. A little bit pensive. I don't know what's going on with his chin. No one does. I don't think any of us do, Hugo. Um, I feel like you could press it into some clay and get an interesting texture, though. That's true. So if anyone wants to try that, it's a little fun activity for you to do at home. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, I'm happy with that. Question question number eight. (laughs) Question number eight. Which Disney Plus TV series launched in January 2001, marking the first MCU content in over a year? Which Disney Plus TV series launched in January 2001, marking the first MCU content in over a year? So there you go. Mm. Get thinking. Have I like the it? white bar. I thought they're a great touch, aren't they? Um, it really adds to it, I feel. Um, so yeah, Question. if you know that, it's done. Uh, yeah, if you know it. Tell you what, I think, yeah. <laughs> Let's just take that as a given. Through most of the questions, <clears throat> if you know it, feel free to write it down. Yeah, exactly. That's what I say. Right, here we go. Question number nine. Question number nine. I thought I'd end, well, not end, but penultimately uh, go with a classic. How many Marvel Cinematic Universe films have there been? So since the since the advent of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, how many films have there been? Um, That's a lot going on in that picture. I know. There's a lot there. So it's looking all right considering it's been copy and pasted by you and then compressed into a Facebook size PowerPoint document and then sent to me. <laughs> I know. I've done I only show, I only choose the best images of my, my PowerPoint so you go. Um done very well there. So there you go. Give that one some thought. Is this contentious or is this true? Uh, I'm don't, I don't think the MCU is contentious really because there aren't any films which are like maybe in it, maybe not. Like there's a quite a defined. Um, what about films that um, the Fantastic Four with Chris Evans in it? <laughs> uh, yeah, true. That one's a bit. That was on the line. We're not quite sure whether that's part of the continuity or not. Um, question number right. ten. Question number ten, which you said you were very proud of. Oh yeah, I did loads of research for this one. Question number 10. Chris Hemsworth plays the Asgardian Thor in many MCU movies. As an actor, he also starred in the 2012 movie The Cabin in the Woods, the screenplay of which was written in just three days. This is the same number of days as the Roman festival of Lemuria. The Romans famously conquered much of Western Europe, including much of the British Isles. Ancient Sicilian writer Diodorus Sicilus refers to the island, presu- refers to it to an island, presumed to be Great Britain, containing a notable temple which is adorned with many magnificent votive offerings and is spherical in shape. Which prehistoric monument in Wiltshire is this excerpt believed by some to be referring to? That's cool. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Thank you. For, yeah. By the way, friend of the show, uh, Diodorus Sicilus. I know, Sicilus. right? He's a great guy. Um, well, this was. <laughs> We're not necessarily is... sure, but hopefully. Yeah, actually, good point. I actually know nothing about him, so I don't want to say that too prematurely. Um, so yeah, this is this is very much not uh, fully accepted. Uh, which is why I say it, believed by some, but you know, there you go. So there you go. That, that's um, the Marvel round. Hopefully, I'd, hopefully I would like that. to. Is Lemuria, Lemuria all about lemurs? You know, <laughs> I think it is. I think it's all about lemurs. Question: They just celebrated lemurs for three days. Snip through these again, Jack. You, you can do the little honors if you like. Okay. Uh, which film start the MCU? Uh, name the two actors that have been in the most MCU movies. Which Phase Three MCU movie grossed the least worldwide? At the turn of the 20th century, how many infinite zones could be found on Earth? Who is the main antagonist in Spider-Man Homecoming? How many films has Bruce Banner featured in? Who plays Gamora in four films? Uh, Which Disney Plus TV series uh, launched in January 2021? Uh, And how many MCU movies have there been? And of course, sorry, this one, I'm not going to say again. But a prehistoric monument in Wiltshire. Just yes. pick one of those. Yeah, pick one. Um, 
there we go. That was our MCU round. And last but not least, we've got uh, our final round, which, as always, is the Wipeout. Jack, how does the Wipeout work? Well, Hugo, the Wipeout works as follows. So we're going to show you uh, 10 general knowledge questions. Um, however, there's one very important thing to keep in mind. Uh, every question that you answer, if you answer it wrongly, that's zero for the whole round. So you've got to make sure you're 100% certain with these questions. So you can choose not to put down any answer, and that won't uh, take away points for the whole round. But as long as you put a right answer and it's wrong, then that is zero points for the whole round. So you've got to make sure that they're right before you write down Tricky anything. Tricky stuff. Thank you to Lawrence, by the way, for this round. Uh, excellent background as well. Um, question number one, here we go. Question number one, which, in a UK electrical socket, which terminal is live? Is it one, as shown in the diagram, two or three? So one, two on the left or three on the right? In UK electrical that, socket, which terminal is live? That's a classic engineering question there. Classic stuff. Have you seen Paranorman, Jack? I haven't. Um, but I remember seeing the trailer. Because I remember, I remember his hair, Paranorman's hair, really standing out to me. I don't uh, like the fact that like, the animation style seems very different for each of the people. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Um, it's... Uh, it kind of reminds me of the film Valiant that we watched on Monday. Oh, what a film. Anyway, question number two, and then, and then we may discuss Valiant. Question number two, who is the only player ever to win back-to-back -back major trebles with two different European football clubs? Who is the only player ever to win back-to-back -back major trebles with two different European football clubs? I... Oh, sorry, um, we've had a, we've had a, just, a little request for clarification, so... Um, as, so the wipeout works that if you write down the answer to a question, like you, for, in this wipeout, if you think, oh, yeah, I'm confident, I'm going to write it down and it's wrong, then you get zero points for the entire round. If I you write down an answer and it's right, and only if you write it down and it's right, do you get a point for it? In other words, if you put an answer and it's right, you get a point. But if you get an answer, if you put an answer and it's wrong, if, and if it's actually written down and it's wrong, then that, in that instance, would be zero points for the entire of round five, a maximum of zero, which is quite low. It's also the minimum amount of points for a round. If, if you write, that helps. if you write one thing down and it's wrong, then that is zero points for the whole round. Mm. Regardless of what you write, any other question, zero points for the whole round. Absolutely. Question number three. PayPal, an online payment system, was acquired by which company in 2002? PayPal, an online payment system, was acquired by which company in 2002? Um, okay, Harvey is still saying he doesn't quite understand. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just going to say, I, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to simplify it. Like I say in as few words as possible. Okay. So if you think you know an answer, write it down. Uh, if you don't know an answer, don't write it down. Because actually, if you get an answer, if you get a question wrong in this round, if you write down an answer and it's wrong during this wipeout round, that's zero points for the entire round automatically. Hang on, hang on, actually. I've got one. So this is, this one just applies to Harvey's team or Harvey. Um, if you write it down on any answer at all, that's hundred that's automatically ten points for the whole round. I don't hold me to that, but just write that down and see what happens. Mm, just write yeah. any answer and see what happens. Um, yeah, if you get one question right, <laughs> it, that's automatically 10 points for the round. Uh, question, that's the reverse one, but we'll try that one day. Sorry, question number four. Question number four. A, an imperial gallon is how many US liquid gallons to one decimal place? To be fair, that's actually quite, if you write two, like, if you like write 10 ridiculously hard questions, and you have to get one of them. And if you get one of them, you get all 10. Oh, well, to be fair. Question number four. Oh, but if you get it, if you get any of them wrong, then that's zero point. That's minus <sighs> five points or something. Holy Question crap. number five. An imperial gallon is how many US liquid gallons to one decimal place? I personally can't see anyone answering this question. <laughs> because if they got if they guessed it and it was wrong, that would be zero points for the entire round. <laughs> You got to really make your conversions to to to, to confidently yeah. take it over here, but you know yeah. that could be a, a an advantage for if you do know that. You know? Absolutely.
Right, question number five. Which Taylor Swift album featured songs such as 22 and I Knew You Were Trouble? Which Taylor Swift album featured songs such as 22 and I Knew You Were Trouble? Um, did you see the news that Taylor Swift is going to be uh, re-recording one of her older albums? What? No, I saw people talking about Taylor Swift, but I didn't know what it was. Which album? Wait, don't say it, don't say it. Oh, I didn't want to say exactly, I purposely didn't say. I can't believe you haven't seen this, Hugo. That was incredibly exciting. It's coming out tonight, at midnight. Oh, blind, blind. I think I'm going to have to stay up. Question number six. Which filming process, also known as the three color process, was initially most commonly used for filming musicals such as The Wizard of Oz, 1939? Which filming process, also known as the three color process, was initially most commonly used for filming musicals such as The Wizard of Oz, 1939? It works so well as well. Oh, the, the rush when you watch Wizard of Oz and suddenly it all becomes color. Wow. What a wow. rush. Honestly. What a rush. What a honestly, what a rush! <laughs> what a rush! What, what a rush! What a rush! When you're watching Wizard of Oz and it's all black and white, and then suddenly it becomes <laughs> color. What, what a rush! Um, question number seven. I don't know what this is devolved into. I'm really sorry, everyone. Uh, well, these two landmarks can be found in which city? These two landmarks can be found in which city? There's two pictures on the screen. What city are they both in? That's that is ah. Oh. So I think this is, that, this is a question where I, this is like, if I was doing this quiz, I would definitely try and get that and I'd definitely probably wipe out. Where do you think it is? I can't tell you. I'll, 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 I'll message you. Oh, uh, we've had a clarification. Um, um, that Annabelle has informed us that the, the new version of Love Story by Taylor Swift is coming out tonight. Uh, but the full revived uh, album of 26 songs uh, won't be out until April the 9th. Oh, I see, I see. Thank you. That is very exciting. Anyway, question fish. number eight. <laughs> Winner Take Nothing, The Old Man and the Sea, and The Sun Also Rises, a notable works by which author? Winner Take Nothing, The Old Man and the Sea, and The Sun Also Rises, a not notable book by which author? You could see my message. I did. Am I right? Uh... I can either confirm or deny. Oh, I can, because no one's seen it. Yeah, you were right. Good job. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, we've got, there's a lovely um, cryptic um, message written out in the native music alphabet in the, in the chat there uh, <laughs> uh, from, from Josh. Thanks for watching, Josh. Um, question number nine. Uh, name this character. Who's this? Like, what's their actual name? What's the name of this character on screen now? What's the name of this character? I don't know if you can. I don't know if you know what I mean, Jack. But doesn't it look like this? Cre this character is absolutely massive. It's terrifying. It looks like it's very... about like twenty feet tall. I feel like it very much fits into the par into the paranormal aesthetic. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm really why I just I'm sorry I'm just marveling over the uh the the alphabet what's just been put Impressive in the... stuff right question number 10 um the three triangle <laughs> symbol indicating that an object is capable of being recycled is an example of what mathematical object the three triangle symbol indicating that an object is capable of being recycled is an example of which mathematical object Hmm, tricky stuff. Interesting, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. What a rush. I feel like um, if everyone, if anyone who doesn't, if who's a mathematician and doesn't get this question right, um, should be minus, minus incredibly points. ashamed of themselves. Yeah. Um, minus 20 moral points. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's run through those again. That's the last round, special occasion. Okay, in, the, in this electrical socket, which terminal is live? Is it the one marked one, the one marked two, or the one marked three? Question number two, who is the only player ever to win back-to-back -back major trebles with two different European football clubs? Question number three, PayPal, an online payment system, was acquired by which company in 2002? Question number four, an imperial gallon is how many US liquid gallons to one decimal place? 
Question number five. Which Taylor Swift album featured songs such as 22 and I Knew You Were Trouble? Question number six. Which filming process, also known as the three color process, was initially most commonly used for filming musicals such as The Wizard of Oz? What a rush. Question number seven. These two landmarks can be found in which city? Question number eight. The winner takes, n- the winner takes nothing. Uh, winner takes nothing. The Old Man of the Sea and The Sun Also Rises are notable works by which author? Question number nine. Name the character on screen now. And question number ten. I just saw Jack's message, which was Hotel Echo Lima Lima Oscar, which is more wholesome. Um, question number 10. The three triangle system indicating that an object is capable of being recycled is an anagram of what mathematical object? That's it. That's the quiz. Pens down. Pens down. That's the opportunity over to answer the questions. But now we're going to move to the answers. Also, through this, get thinking of what you might make your team name, because there is a prize for team name. The prize of picking around in the next week's quiz. Um, brilliant. Um, and so here we go. Here are the answers. Not any further. <laughs> um, so question, uh, random one was the next round. Question number Jack, one. Really... Yes. Um, which artist controversially smashed a sorry, uh, Phoebe Bridges. She, Phoebe Bridges controversially smashed a guitar. I didn't know it was controversial. Uh, it was controversial uh, that it was controversial. That some people thought it was controversial. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course. Um, <laughs> Rest Westeros is the answer to question number two, which uh, Westeros to Nova Scotia, they say. Yes, a classic song. Uh, would recommend to listen. Uh, that film is The Green Mile. The Green Mile, so well done if you got that one. Uh, question number four. Uh, this is, of course, Yuri Geller. Uh, so well done if you got that. Question number five is Microsoft Bing. Bing classic is fine. Engine. Bing is fine. Bing is fine. I think you might have an idea what the, what the link is, Jack. Potentially. Uh, question number six that is Central Park. So Central Park, Central Park, apparently the most filmed location in the world. I oh, don't surprise me. It's very, it's been filmed a lot. Um, question number seven is the Manhattan Project. Uh, the Manhattan Project. Not a friend of the show. No, not at all. That is Elizabeth Regina. Elizabeth Regina. Question number nine, uh, of course, is Phalanges. Mm, Phalanges. What could the link be? What could the, the link, link be? Is, of course, Friends. I didn't get that Soul at all. Stuff. You didn't get it? No. Oh, did you not? No. Um, what did you think it was? I don't know. I was. I. I didn't get it at the end. I, I didn't get it at all. They're all related to the hit um, 1998? No, 1989 to 2006, I don't know, sitcom Friends. Um, as you will see in the fact that we've got Phoebe Bridges, like Phoebe from Friends, Wester Ross, like Ross from Friends, Rachel Green, um, Ro- Monica Geller, or Ross Geller, Chandler Bing, Central Perk is where they all have their coffee, is one of the previous frequent sets. It's set in Manhattan. Um, and Phoebe's alias is often Regina Falange. So there we go. So that's that right out the way. So very well done there if you got the link. And then we had our Welsh pick and mix. Uh, the northernmost section of the border between Wales and England is, of course, the River Dee. The River, River Dee, Dee, like Dundee, but not because I don't think that's related. The River Dee. Then we have uh, the one that wasn't real is, of course, Toad in Hole. That's not, that's not a Welsh place. That was, I think that might have been made up. Toad in Hole. Splot is one that I is related to my sister in some way. Uh, question number three. The Christmas of Wales, you mentioned on the news, is the um, the lusciously voiced Mark Drakeford Mark Drakeford um, Arthur King Arthur of course which mythical king it's going to be King Arthur question number five uh, this is of course a horse uh, so don't go into a, someone don't drink someone's alcohol carrying a, a cow skull that would be rude do it with a horse skull question number five this is of course Feynman Sam Feynman Sam friend of the show someone did all the voices of Feynman Sam wow um, Leek the leak has been around for longer. Rod Gilbert is, of course, of course um, the Welsh comedian who's been in Rod, Rod Gilbert's work experience. Um, it's Not Unusual is sung by Carlton in The French Prince of Bel-Air. Uh, there are 19 syllables in Lanfair, Pygwin, Gilgoch. No, I don't know. Gogogoch. I, well, I thought I'd give it a go, but I thought it would come to me, but alas. And then we had a What's on TV round. Here we go. This was, word, was a word stick, remember. This one is, of course, Alison. Alison Hammond, I want to say. Alison Hammond, I think. But the answer we just wondered there was Alison. 
Um, Nick Hewer was next. Nick Hewer. Um, of course, Jane had the grace of a reversing dump truck without any tyres on. That's the answer we wanted. If you haven't got those words, you've, got, you've not got the point, I'm afraid. We wanted exactly reversing dump truck without any tyres on. Because the R was related to Nick Hewer and the N was related to this answer, which of course is news round. News round. After news round, we've got Dion Dublin. So stairs leading up to the bedrooms. He says a lot of times, Dion Dublin, what a guy. Also, mm. Dion Dublin, the inventor of the musical instrument known as the Dube. Oh, that helps. I know that. Uh, question number six. Uh, I spoke in the social sec was based on a show presented by Noel Edmonds. The one and only Noel Edmonds. Is that what you've been doing, Jack? Jack, you've been writing up. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, brilliant. And, um, question, what does it say, Jack? The message is a secret message? The secret message is secret. No, it says it says one wrong equals zero mark. Uh, it's true. That's useful to know. Question How is it related to the messy um, alphabet? It's, of course, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Um, then he was, of course... Rock Rock Davis was Phyllis Flitwick in Harry Potter. Harry Potter. After Harry Potter, it um, Roman Kemp, the son of Martin Kemp from Spandau Ballet. Roman Kemp. And after this one is of course the cinema is is of course Paul Sinha. Paul Sinha. Paul Sinha. There we go. Brilliant stuff. And then we had um oh look at that animation. Ooh. Amazing. Off you go, Jack. Okay. Wait. Um, did I just read out your one by accident? Sorry about that. Yeah, that's fine. You can read out your ones then. Perfect. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, okay. Question number one. This is Iron Man. So Iron Man was the first film in the MCU. Uh, question number two. That is, of course, Samuel L. Jackson and Chris Evans, who played Nick Fury and Captain America, respectively. So one point for either of those. Yep. Uh, question number three is uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. That was the least grossing film of the phase three movies. Question number four was space and time stone. So the space stone, if I'm correct, was currently was buried in Norway somewhere. And the time stone was being held by the ancient one uh, on Earth somewhere. Sounds good to me. Uh, that was Vulture or um, someone Tombs. I can't remember his first name, but yeah, either way works. Um, so he's featured in six. So he's featured in Incredible Hulk, uh, Thor Ragnarok and the four Avengers movies. Uh, so we're in, Avengers Ultra, Infinity War, and Endgame. So we're not, so we're not including the film Hulk. No, that's not part of the MCU. We're not including Eric Banner's one. We're including the Incredible Hulk with Ed Norton. That is part of the that's MCU. That's the one. Okay. Uh, question number seven. Uh, Zoe Saldana plays Gamora in the MCU film. Uh, this is of course One Division. Great show. Uh, question number nine. There have been twenty-three. Uh, I haven't actually counted, so it probably could be wrong, but I'm just taking what the internet told me. So 23. Um, and it's, of course, Stonehenge. It couldn't be anything else. It has to be Stonehenge, of course. Stonehenge, of course. And as I overspoke one of yours, Jack, you get to read out this one as well, if you like. Ooh, you okay. Uh, question, wipeout. Uh, question number one uh, is, of course, socket, uh, terminal, th- uh, oh, yeah, terminal three. Uh, that I is we might the... have had a few wipeouts on this one. The lives will be zero so, yeah. the entire round. That's a difficult one, that one. Uh, so this is Samuel Itao, potentially. I don't know any more information about that, I'm afraid. But I'm just, yep. yeah. Uh, question number three is eBay. eBay. Uh, I capitalised that wrong in the answer. Sorry about that. Question number four is 1.2. So very well done if you actually got that right um, well and went for it at all. Well done. Question number five, that is, of course, with the album Red. Um what do you think about the word red on a blue background? Oh, it's 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 play one do one of those tests where like it tests like my uh, my logic skills or something. I don't know. Question number six uh, is of course uh, Technicolor live in Technicolor. Um, oh, we've had a query, Jack, um, on the one about the most the most featured actors in the MCU. What about Stanley? Yep. Yeah, I you can get a point, for Stanley. Uh, Stanley's of course in all of them. Um, <laughs> and I was I meant to say I meant to say that Stanley we weren't counting, but I forgot to say that. So you can have, oh, you, that. Can have a, you can have a point for Stanley then. Very well done. Um, yeah. Rory says read the IMDb IMDb page, Jack. Read it and understand it. <laughs> yeah, no, I meant to say that Stanley would be an exception, but I forgot. You can have Stanley. 
Uh, that is St. Petersburg, of course, St. Petersburg. That is, I think, the Hermitage at the bottom. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, Ernest Hemingway uh, is that one. The nine, that is, of course, Dipsy. Uh, Dipsy there. And uh, Mobius Strip is the map. Mobius Strip, so there we go. So I don't think your scores. I'll add a... uh, thank you for that. Hopefully none of that was too contentious for you. Um, <laughs> add, add up scores as quick as you can. Come up with a team name. And Jack is going to painstakingly and carefully make yep. sure he posts something on Hillby SLC page. So you can go to the post, which will be there shortly, probably by the time you hear this, because we're 20 seconds ahead of you. Oh, good point. Um, I'll write it really fast. Um, you'll be able to go to Hillby SLC Facebook page and post your team name and your score, and then you'll be in for a chance of winning various things. So there we go. Uh, quick as you like. Okay. So Done. is that is it and, and it's accessible and it's posted by Hillby SLC page? Yep, not my personal account. Yep, that's Brilliant. correct. Brilliant. Okay, so go to that post on Hillby SLC Facebook page and comment below your team name and your score. Right, so Jack, now it's time for a part of the show based allegedly on a program presented by Noel Edmonds called Are You Smarter Than the Social Sec? This is not part of the main quiz. This is just a little bit of fun while we wait for your scores to come in. Um, where we ask some questions of self-proclaimed brain box not true. the cleverest man in the world so Jack Rawdon and we see how he does if you at home get more questions right than um, Jack then you are officially smarter than social set so f- for this round today Jack we've got some questions in honour of the new uh, game show on at uh, various times on whatever time it's on in the day. Uh, here's five questions about lightning. Thank you, Kieran, for these. Whew, okay. Tribute to the to the new show presented by Zoe Lyons. Okay, so question number one, we're about lightning. Which lightning and colour-related metaphor means something important or unusual that happens suddenly or expectantly? I can repeat it if you need. Yes, please, could you repeat it? Which lightning and colour-related metaphor means something important or unusual that happens suddenly or unexpectedly? A red red sprite, maybe? I don't know. Red sprite, okay. Question number two. Lightning flashes on Earth roughly 44 times a minute. True or false? True. True. Question number three. Um, what sort of clouds with bases one to two kilometers above the ground are usually involved in making lightning? Uh, cumulonimbus. Cumulonimbus, the classic. Do I just know that from the Clarence Charles and Meatballs? Quite possibly. Question number five. How many people get struck by lightning in the US every year? <laughs> God. Uh, 30. 30. And uh, now you've given it, I will say I'll give you um, 300 either way. What? Uh, okay, question number five. Um, which rare lightning related weather event this, described by a portmanteau was, well, not, it's not really a portmanteau to be honest, it, um, was observed in the UK in December 2020? Oh, thunder snow. Thunder snow. Not sure of that. Okay, so question number one, you said red sprite. I'm afraid that what we were after was bolt from the blue. I've never heard of that. A bolt from the blue. That sounds like it might be a Yorkshire expression, but thank you, Kieran. Um, apparently, lightning flashes on Earth not 44 times a minute, so that you you were wrong, I'm afraid, but 44 times a second. Yeah, actually, that sounds that does sound a bit ridiculous. 44 a minute. It probably yeah, that, that makes more sense. Um, it is cumulonimbus, nicely done. Question number four. Um, it was four hundred, I'm afraid. So you don't, don't you're not quite crap. eligible for the points. Uh, four hundred people get struck by lightning every, in the US every year, apparently. Sorry to them. Thunder snow as well. So that's Ooh. two. You, that's Ooh, better bad. sometimes. Yeah. So if you've got more than two, then you're officially smart on the social sex. So very well done. Brilliant stuff. stuff. How are things yeah. going in the uh? In the world of other things. I'll have a little look. Lots of scores in already. (laughs) 
Um, right, so I'll, I'll give you your three, Flyjack. Yep. And you can decide. I think we've had one removed because they forgot to put their score on. Uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. So, Jack, which of these do you want to win? So, the best team name. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you can have perfectly, per- perfectly mediocre as all things should be. Yeah. The little Thanos reference there. Um. <laughs> Spider Nan, far from retirement home. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think I do have to go for. Got one question right in the wipeout. Who got ten points? Oh no. <laughs> um. Oh no. That's also good. We got some good ones today. I think also, shout with... out to the people who just put funny name in Welsh. <laughs> Damn. Okay, I'm gonna go with the uh, the Spider Man one because that did Spider Man make... far from retirement home. <clears throat> so thank you very much to them. I'm commenting on your comment, and then you can comment what you want the team name, your, the quiz around to be next week. Do do do. do. So who's uh? What's how the scores looking, Hugo? Scores at the doors. I will tell you very shortly. Right. So looking like we've got lots of lots of scores in the thirties, but uh, the winners at this time seem to be with forty points. Very well done to you. I need to have the the slide that says results up. Sorry, otherwise how you notice the results. It's the results. The winner with 40 points is Samuel Et Too Good at Quizzing. It's a clever link there to the question at the end. Thank you very much to uh, everyone for coming. Um, lovely to see some people we haven't seen in a while. Some old, some old favourites. Um, lovely to see you all here. And But I now leave you with this. For only the winners, no one else look at this. Here's a lovely prize of um, it's, a, it's a drawing I made of you winning the quiz. Here it is. Here's, here's oh. me and Jack um, handing you, whoever you are, um, the number one trophy. So hope you hope you enjoy this picture. Um, this is just for you. And thank you for coming to the quiz. What a, what a time. What a time. Thanks for coming. See you next week for a, a specialist round, which we don't know yet, but we will shortly. And it will just be a great time, you know. Good stuff. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed. And have a, uh, have a good one. Enjoy this little picture. Yeah. Um, and see uh, you on the flipperoo, I guess. We'll see you next week. Have a great one. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, we've got the the round in. No. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Are. Okay. Yeah. So uh, see you next week. <laughs>